Hi, I'm Miss Connie, and you're watching Storytime with Miss Connie. Thank you so much for you boys and girls and parents for joining me today. We have some wonderful books to read today, and I hope everybody is so excited when I read them to you that you will go to the Bowie Public Library and get ch check them out, and you can go and read them again because they're so wonderful. So... But first, I have to tell you a little story. If you could see right behind me, there's a picture of a fire truck with a ladder going up a tree. Do you see it? And in that tree was a little itty bitty kitty. I mean, the kitty got up there. I don't know how she got up there, but she got up there somehow. And she was up there for three days. Nobody knew how to get her down. How sad that was. But the homeowner who lived there at the house where the tree grew knew it wasn't her kitty because she didn't have an outside kitty. But she felt so sorry for the kitty that she tried to call everybody, trying to find out the one who could help get the kitty down from the tree. To no avail, she tried all different areas to try to get somebody to come and help. But she just couldn't get anybody with a tall enough ladder or a tall enough reach, or whatever. It was so hard to get the kitty down. So we went, and we had a whole bunch of people helping us, and the fire truck finally came with a ladder. Wow, as you can see, that ladder is stretched way up to the tree. And where the ladder is stopped, the kitty is way above that, almost to the top of that tree. So... The wonderful, brave firefighter of Bowie, Maryland, walked up that long, long, steep ladder and finally was able to collect the kitty cat and bring it down to safety. Boy, was that exciting. And I'll tell you something, the Bowie Fire Department was so wonderful and brave, and all the neighbors, we all tried to help that little kitty. And the next picture you're going to see is of the wonderful firefighters that helped get the kitty down, and the homeowner is on the, you're looking at the screen, she's on the right, and her, no, she's on the left, and her neighbor, who were, where the fire truck parked, is on the right. And Harmony Dale is on, is in the center, well, sort of center to the left, holding the kitty. Now, we've affectionately named the kitty Maple because it was a maple tree that she was up. So the next picture you're going to see is of little Maple. She was so cute. Look at that. Isn't that not beautiful? She, is so, she turned out to be so sweet and loving. And Bowie kept her in her, their holding room for a couple of days. And now it's down at the Prince George's County Animal Shelter where it's being acclimated to a new room. And soon it will be up for adoption. So this little kitty deserves a forever home because she has been through an awful lot. So thank you so much. Now we're going to just have that fire truck picture up for the rest of the show because um, I thought that was so amazing how that ladder could reach. And it just reached. Holy mackerel. It was so exciting. And if you visit my Facebook, Cause for Paul's Cares, you can see more pictures. I hope you do visit it. And maybe like us while you're there. That would be great. Okay. So the first book we're going to read is Silly Susie Goose. Silly Susie Goose. Silly Susie Goose. And this book was written by Petter, and it's P-E-T-R. So I don't know how if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I'm going to say Petter. It could be Peter. Horasak. So obviously he is of some nationality that spells this Peter differently. I don't know. But he wrote a wonderful book, so let's read it. Silly Susie Goose. And I love that silly Susie Goose. Look at that. And there's a flamingo there. That's cute, isn't it? Okay. One day, Susie Goose looked around. She was just like everybody else. I wish I could be different, she thought. And look at all the goose there. 
all the goose. They all look. They all look the same. I couldn't. I couldn't tell Susie, Susie Goose, pick her out of that crowd myself. My goodness. So then, if I was a bat, I could hang upside down and flap my wings. Would anybody out there like to be a bat like that and hang from their feet? Look at Susie Goose. She could hardly do that. If I was a toucan, I could make a loud squ uh, squawk. I hope I didn't hurt anybody's ears. Squawk, squawk. Okay, so anyway, um, that's a beautiful toucan. They're very colorful birds. Does anybody know how to do a squawk? Let's try it. Everybody, one, two, three. Squawk. Thank you, that was very good. If I was a penguin, I could slip and slide. Look at that. How would you like to slide on your tummy? My goodness, here, let me move this out so you can see. Look at that. He's sliding on his tummy. I think that would hurt me. But look, Susie Goose is standing there waiting for her slide. I wonder if she made it. Boy, that had to be really hard to do. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I might have to do this here. Okay, here we go. Oh, my. If I was a giraffe, I could stretch up high. Stretch up high. Can everybody stretch? Stretch, stretch, stretch up high. And there's Susie. Susie Goose down there trying to stretch. Everybody stand up and stretch. Stretch. Very good. That's a very good stretch. If I was an elephant, I could splish and splash. And look at that silly Susie, silly Susie Goose. Silly, silly Susie Goose. She's getting all splashed by that elephant. I bet you she's feeling really good. Sometimes it's nice to be splashed, isn't it? Okay. If I was a kangaroo, I could jump, 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 and jump. I don't know. That would be a lot of jumping, wouldn't it? How about if I was an ostrich, I could run really fast. And there she is, silly goose, silly Susie Goose is sitting up on the ostrich, taking a ride. She's taking a ride. Holy mackerel. Oh, wow, this is interesting. If I was a seal, I could swim under the water. Well, she could actually swim, but she only ducks down when she's like, you ever see a duck in the, in the pond or the lake? They go upside down, and all you see is their feet coming up. That's very cute. And there's that big old seal there. He's showing her how to swim. He's, it's, seals swim very fast when they want to. I was surprised at how fast they swam. Okay, let's see if I got... Oh, yeah, I do have two pages. If I was a lion, I could roar and roar. Okay, boys and girls, on the count of three, I want to hear your loudest roar. One, two, three. Roar! That was pretty loud. You did good. Okay, then the next one is, oh, look at her. She's trying to do the roar honk. Can you do that? Roar honk. That really is crazy, isn't it? That's a crazy roar, said Susie Goose. But the lion didn't notice, so Susie Goose tried again. How silly. That is silly. She's being very silly. And she's trying it again. Roar, honk. Because that's what they like to do. They honk, honk. Can anybody do honk? One, two, three, honk, honk. Oh, that's very good. Tom did a very good honk. He should be on TV. Okay. This time the lion did notice, and he didn't like it at all. Look at him. He's getting up. He's chasing silly Susie Goose. <laughs> she's, getting, she's getting out of Dodge real fast. She don't want the lion to play with her. Susie Goose yelled and stretched and swam and jumped and splashed. 
She could do all of those. And slid, oh, that must be a mud pedal, and flapped and ran. I know I've got two pages here. There we go. All the way back to the others. Look at her running. Run, 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 run. And there are friends waiting for her. My goodness. Just in time. Look at that lion, all surrounded by all those geese. Do you know the plural of goose is geese? So you have one goose, or you have a bunch of geese. Perhaps it is better to be just like everyone else, thought, thought Susie Goose. Look at that. So the lion's walking away into the sunset, and the geese are all hanging out together. So those are her friends. But not always. Here we go. Roar, honk. Everybody do it again. Roar, honk. That's good. You guys are so good out there. So that was it. Oh, my goodness. Wasn't that a wonderful book? Silly Susie Goose. I like that one. So this is the one you want to get at the Prince George's County, the Bowie um, uh, Library. There we have the Bowie Library. So go to that one and ask for Silly Susie Goose. That's very cute. I like that. That was a very good book. Did you girls and boys like that? I think so. I like that. Okay. So I have another one here that I think you might like, and I thought it was very cute. So let's see. All right. This one is Prudence Wants a Pet. Now, I know a lot of kids want pets. This one's by Kathleen Daly. Illustrations by Stephen Michael King. So she's there drawing a... I don't know what that is. It looks like a dog with a half of an eye and a full eye and a pig's nose. And that's, that's very cute. Anyway, prudence. So everybody, I have people, all of these kids coming up to me and say, I want a pet. I want a pet. But you have to know that when you get a pet, you have to be able to take care of it. So if you want a pet, talk to your mommy and daddy. Because sometimes the time is not quite right to get a pet. Because you're busy at school and doing lots of things. And you know, pets need attention and love, just like boys and girls do from their mommies and their daddies. So if you want a pet, I would say just sort of like wait until you're older and you can spend time with your pet and give it walks if it's a doggy or play teaser with it if it's a kitty. Or you could get a hamster or guinea pig or a bunny. There's so many different pets. Okay, moving right along. This is Prudence. Prudence wants a pet. What kind of a pet do you think she would want? I don't know. I think we're, this is gonna be an interesting book. Okay, there's Prudence wants, now she's got a fishing pole there. She's got a net with the butterfly there, wants a, and she's got a jar with a, looks like a spider, pet. And there she is. She's drawing her pet that she wants. I still don't know what kind of pet that is, but, you know, it's an interesting looking pet. Let's see what else she's going to have. Let's see if I've got two pages. I keep getting two pages. No, says Dad. Pets cost too much to keep. No, says mom. Pets make noise. See, and they do. Pets cost money because you have to feed them. You have to brush them. You have to take them to the vet. So you have to be all, you have to know everything about that. So you need to do research on what it takes to have a pet. Prudence gets a pet. It is a branch. Wow, look at that. She got a branch, nice big branch too. So do you think that's the pet for Prudence? Doesn't eat much, does it? And you don't really have to walk it. That might be an interesting pet. Its name is Branch. That's quite interesting. That's a very unique name. Prudence drags it to school. She drags it home again. 
Branch is getting some exercise, says Prudence. That's always good. You need your pet to have exercise. Branch doesn't eat much, just a little air. Prudence puts out a bowl of water for Branch. So far, Branch has not been thirsty. Mm. Do you think branches get thirsty? Well, if they're attached to the tree, they probably do. But if they're not, then they probably don't. And then we have Branch is an in outdoor pet. Branch lives on the front porch. Branch tripped Dad. Oh my goodness, look, Dad's coming down. There's his legs. Eight times. Oh my, I think Prudence might be in a little bit of trouble. Hope not. Dad broke Branch into little bits and put them on the wood pile. There he is. He's put Branch and then put him in the wood pile. And there he is breaking it up. My goodness. And there he is. There is the branch on the wood pile. I think Prudence might be sad, don't you think? Yeah, because that was her branch. Oh, Prudence has a new pet. Its name is Twig. Twig lives in her pocket. There, it's in her pocket there. Twig doesn't need air, water, or a porch. Twig is a miracle. There's Twig, and she's just happy to have Twig around. And now she's all in the rain, so now she has to take her dress off because it's soaking wet. Twig ran away in the rinse cycle. Prudence put up a notice in the laundry room. Lost pet. Twig is the name, small and brown, really small. Call 555-9292. Now that's a fake number, just so you know. That's a fake number. So far, no one has called. What do you think Prudence is going to do now? She lost her branch. She lost her twig. I'm so worried about her. Prudence wants a pet. No, Prue, says Dad. There's not enough space. No, says Mom. Did you clean your room yet? See, that's the whole thing. You got to be very, very good about taking care of your room and everything like that in order to have a pet. Prudence gets a new pet. Now, okay, first she has a branch and then a twig. What kind of a pet do you think it is now? It is an old shoe. Its name is Formal Footwear. She found the name written on its inside, and there she is dragging the shoe. She puts Formal Footwear on a leash and takes him for a walk around the block. Well, that had to be an interesting look when you see a, a little girl dragging an old shoe on a leash. Wow. She, at least she has a pet. The neighbors find formal footwear very interesting. Prudence shows them all the tricks she has taught formal footwear. Formal footwear is a smart shoe. There she is. She's teaching. I don't know what. Oh, she looks like she's teaching it to come. And it's standing on her toe. And this one she's twirling around. And I guess the neighbors are watching her balance it on her finger. Soon Prudence... Prudence gets tired of taking formal footwear on walks and making him do tricks. Formal footwear never licks Prudence or jumps in her lap. Prudence frees formal footwear in the junkyard. She knows formal footwear will be happier there. There's the junkyard there. And there's Prudence taking him. Well, you see, now she got tired of him. That's, that's what can happen, so you got to be really careful about when you get a pet. Okay, oh, one of my, one of my decorating, decorations came off, and Kitty's moving, okay. Prudence finds a new pet. Holy mackerel, how many pets do you think she's got? It is her brother. His name is Milo. Here's Milo. She puts Milo in a box with some water. Okay, now, you Putting a little baby in a box with some water, that's a little weird. Prudence washes her new pet. She dries him and brushes his fur. Now, that is silly, isn't it? Doesn't Milo, doesn't Milo's bow look nice? Uh-oh. It's her brother and she put a bow in his hair. Oh. 
Her new pet, Milo, is hungry. She feeds him some seeds and grass. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't think too many people eat seeds and grass. Milo doesn't feel very good, and he won't stay in his box. Now, what do you think is going to happen to Milo eating seeds and grass? My goodness, I think he's going to get a little sick. Mom and Dad are mad at Prudence. Grass is not for boys. Milo is a little green. Prudence is very sorry. Prudence wants a new pet. No, says Dad. We've been over this. No, says Mom. Pets are messy. Well, see, there's all kinds of reasons not to get a pet. You got to be prepared. You got to know what you're getting into. Prudence finds a new pet. It's a car tire. Look at that car tire, and she's hugging it. Boy, she's finding some interesting pets, isn't she? Does anybody remember the first pet she found? I heard you. A branch, that's correct. His name is Mr. Round. It's hard to roll Mr. Round straight. He rolls this way and that way. Whoops! The neighbors aren't pleased with Mr. Round. Look at that. Mr. Round ended up on that guy's neck. Wow, that had to be strange. Mr. Round is getting harder to roll and to carry. Mr. Round is big. Prudence is small. See how big Mr. Round is? And look how big, how small Prudence is. Mr. Round finds a new home in the vacant lot. He will have friends there. So she took him to a vacant lot. So that was good, though, when she finds that, you know, he would be happier somewhere else. That's also very good. Okay. Prudence needs a new pet. Wow. She sees an ad for sea buddies. Yes, says Mom. You may get those. <gasps> She's going to get a pet. They come in a package and are dry like Kool-Aid to be mixed with water. Dry animals in a package? They come to life in water? Prudence is so excited she can hardly stir. Prudence watches the water. Look at that. She's watching the water. One day passes. Then two. Something is growing. Look at that. Something is growing. It looks like pulp. Like freeze dry, fre fresh squeezed orange juice, but not orange. Those are the sea buddies, says Dad. The pulp, says Prudence. Yes, I believe so. Prudence goes to live in the closet for the rest of the day. She was hoping the sea buddies would have faces or move. So there he got, she's in the closet and she's got a sign there that says, keep out. Prudence really wants a pet, says mom. Yes, she does, said dad. Hmm, says mom. Hmm, says dad. Somebody's birthday is next week, says mom. Hmm, says dad. Hmm, says mom. Hmm, what do you think is going to happen? Prudence gets a big pink birthday present. It has holes in the side, and it makes a noise. There it is. What do you think is in there? Wow, let's see. Meow. Can everybody say that? One, two, three. Meow. Okay. Prudence stands up and jumps up and down eight times. Her eyes get hot and tingly. She's so happy it leaks out of her eyes a little. She doesn't know about these kinds of tears. Aren't you going to open it, says Mom? Prudence lifts up the lid. There it is, her very own ball of brown fluff. She squeezes and squeezes, but not too tight. She snuffles and kisses. He is skinny and brown with little legs like twigs. What will you name him, asks Dad. Branch, says Prudence. <laughs> There's the kitty. It's brown. And so the first pet she got was Branch, and that's the last pet she got, and that's going to be Branch. Prudence wants a pet. That's a great story. Again, 
at the, at the Bowie, um, Bowie Library, pick it up and read it, and maybe you will learn a little bit about pets, too. Wow, that was fun. Well, our time is just about up. We only have just a little time left to say hi to our wonderful friends out there with our magic glasses. So I'm going to put my magic glasses on, and we're going to see if we can see our wonderful friends out there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Look at all you wonderful children out there. There's Jackson and Sophia and Lucas and Lily. You've been so good with your little doggy. Very good. Mason and Harper and Logan. You've been very good in school, I understand. You've been very good. Congratulations. Evelyn and Michael and, of course, Scarlett with the biggie, biggie kitty that she has. And she takes it and loves it and kisses it and hugs it. So thank you very much. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. We had such a wonderful show. I want you to please be kind to your pets. And please remember, spay or neuter your pets to prevent more homeless animals because they are a cause for paws. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.